the, the live meeting have technical issues or prefer to submit comments following the public hearing, you may email your comments to planning at trenthills.ca. That's a lowercase um, letters and it's planning at trenthills.ca. The municipality requires these comments no later than seven days after this meeting to ensure the comments can be reviewed by planning staff, staff prior to preparing a final recommendation report to be heard at a future council meeting. <clears throat> As a reminder to individuals attending the meeting, please turn off your video and mute your microphone until staff have concluded presenting the application you wish to speak to. Turn on your video when you wish to speak to the application to ensure you're visible to the chair. Unmute your microphone when you are speaking. Once your item has been addressed, you may leave the meeting. If you're also watching the live stream and have unmuted your microphone to speak, please close the live sorry, please close the live stream browser window as there will be an audio feedback that will cause uh, a delayed echo effect. Thank you. Um, we are now at the uh, first application, which is severance consent application B47-2022 and zoning amendment application C34-2022 for Vince and Maria uh, D'Amico at 311 Concession 11 West Geographic Township of Percy. And I will now turn it over to the planning staff. Thank you, through you, Mr. Mayor. Um, first, we'd like to note that all the applications on the agenda tonight, that the notice of the public hearings or the public meetings were given in accordance with the Planning Act. As noted, the first application is severance consent application B47-2022, along with zoning amendment application C34-2022. The applicants are Vince and Maria D'Amico for the property located at 311 Concession Road 11 West in the geographic township of Percy. The severance application proposes to create one new parcel. It's approximately 0.91 hectares or 2.27 acres. It is vacant land and will be for residential building purposes. The retained portion is approximately 1.93 hectares or 4.79 acres and it does contain the existing residential dwelling and outbuildings. The applicants did submit the zoning amendment application in conjunction with the severance application, um, which will recognize the environmental protection zone in the one corner of the property. Um, the current zoning of the property is environmentally sensitive. Um, we are leaving the environmentally sensitive zone in place. It does recognize that the, the whole property is heavily wooded um, the ES zone does allow the property to be eligible for a residential building permit. We did circulate to Lower Trent Conservation Authority. Um, they did inquire about the environmentally sensitive zoning, um, but we did put the environmental protection zoning, as I said, in the corner just to recognize the buffer around a wetland feature. And we also circulated to Northumberland County um, their comments were included in the agenda package for your review and consideration. Planning staff have followed up with Northumberland County just to inquire about their requirement for a one foot reserve, um, as they are already the authority to grant an entrance permit onto a county road. And we do have the mapping, which shows the proposed severed portion again, which is approximately 2.27 acres vacant land. Um, there were some, there are some adjacent barns on the north side of the road. We did take into consideration the minimum distance separation and the setbacks were not of any concern for the application. And again, it's the same mapping, just showing the zoning that this portion will be environmentally sensitive as well. And it's just this corner down here at the south that would be environmental protection, um, but there will still be a suitable building envelope on the entire property. And thank you, Mr. Mayor. Thank you very much, Liz. Uh, I noticed that the uh, D'Amico's are with us. Do you have anything to add to your application? Uh, 
Um, I thank you for taking the time to hear our application. Um, I think uh, Liz covered everything. Um, don't have anything to add unless there are any questions or clarification. Thank you very much, sir. Um, any questions from council? Uh, Deputy Mayor Metcalf. Thank you, Your Worship. And um, Liz did address one of my questions and with to do with the county uh, requiring that one foot um, reserve when they have the authority for the to to issue the entrance permit under their policy. So I'm just uh, the questions out there, and I'm sure we'll get an answer back from the county as to why we need both of those to ensure that there's only one entrance. But I'll await that answer. Thank you. Thank you very much. Anyone else? Is there anyone joining us this evening that would like to speak to this application? All right, seeing none, we will move on. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. and Mrs. D'Amico. Uh, we are now at severance consent application B52-2022 for uh, Evo Land Holdings Incorporated, uh, Murray McLennan, McLennan Kelleher Road Geographic Township of Seymour. And uh, Rosemary has disqualified herself and she's turned off her video. Uh, and I'll turn it over to the planning department. Thank you, uh, Mr. Mayor, through you. Uh, we have application B52-2022 uh, before council. It's for EVO land holdings on Kelleher Road, part lot nine and Gore concession in the geographic township of Seymour. Next slide, please. Uh, so the severance, severance application proposes to create uh, a lot line adjustment between two existing properties. So approximately 0 0.47 acres of land will be severed from a parcel and is proposed to merge with lands adjacent to the west on Kelleher Road. Uh, the subject lands are within the Greenlands designation and they are environmentally protected. Uh, the application has pre precipitated from the landowner's difficulty in the access to the subject lands due to the environmental features. Uh, so the application, even though it is a lot line adjustment, we did circulate it to Lower Trek Conservation for comments uh, as there are wetland features and watercourses on the subject lands. Uh, we also consulted with the roads manager uh, for review of the proposed driveway locations for the applications. Next slide, please. As you can see from this proposed sketch, uh, the portion of land that is to be severed is outlined in yellow, and this land will be merged with the land to the west. Uh, and those two lines together where it splits on the right-hand side of the yellow marking, that's where the driveways would come in, uh, one for each portion of land. And that's what's been reviewed by the roads manager, the planning department, uh, and the conservation authority. Um, and also, I just wanted to note for this application, there are no new lots that are being proposed. We're just working with two existing lots and looking for adequate access that uh, can be accommodated with the environmental features. Uh, so thank you. That's everything I have. And then we're available for questions. Thanks, Crystal, very much. Um, is um, Are we joined by e either the EVO Holdings or, or Murray McLennan that have any, anything to add? Uh, I'm here. I don't know if I'm hooked in or not, but uh, yeah. I don't. I don't really have anything to add. It's pretty pretty straightforward as they laid out. Thank Thank you very much. Uh, are there any questions from council? Deputy Mayor Medcalf. Thank you, Your Worship. Uh, in the report back from Lower Trent Conservation. They're requesting an additional EIS, uh, seeing as one was done for building permit versus one which we're currently going through a planning process. What's what's the difference between those two? Sure. Uh, so through you, Mr. Mayor, uh, typically the building permit versus a planning process have different triggers for studies and review that we look at. Uh, so there is 
a trigger for growth plan policies because those are invoked with any planning application in North um, in Trent Hills. Uh, that the conservationary comments are to review those policies. Uh, from a planning perspective, I guess what I always look back at is the intent of that growth plan is to make sure we're making great planning decisions when we're creating lots for the most part. Um, in this instance, those lots are already created and we are kind of doing the best we can with what we have on the landscape. And we are still using the Conservation Authority in terms of their uh, regulation and planning review for setbacks. Um, yes. Okay, thanks. I, I was just a bit curious as it was a lot line adjustment and like you said, it was not uh, a new lot um, addition. So. Thanks very much, Crystal. Um, are we joined by anyone that would like to speak to this application? All right, hearing none, we will carry on. We are now at Zoning Amendment Application C32-2022 for Jessica and J. Chris York, 52 Bagley Road, Geographic Township of Percy, and I'll turn it over to the planning folks. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, so before you, we have application C32-2022 for Jessica and Chris York at 52 Bag Bagley Road and the geographic township of Percy. Next slide, please. Uh, so the purpose and effect of this proposed zoning bylaw amendment is to rezone the subject lands from the rural residential zone to a special exception rural zone. Uh, so the amendment would recognize the current agricultural use of the landowners as they uh, currently uh, farm sustainable willow on the subject lands. Uh, the amendment will also permit the landowners to continue to operate a local Trent Hills business uh, that they recently relocated to these lands. Uh, the landowners plan to run workshops on the property using the agricultural willow crop and the landowner will uh, invite a maximum of eight participants at a time up to two to three times per week for classes. Uh, so the comments were circulated to the Conservation Authority for the Zoning Bylaw Amendment. Next slide, please. Uh, so this map shows uh, the subject lands. It also uh, shows where adjacent landowners are with respect to this property. Uh, next slide. We also have for you with this application, uh, the applicant submitted a site plan for the property that shows existing buildings and the distances between these buildings. Um, it also shows where the existing parking lo is located that would accommodate the use. Uh, the parking is gravel and provides ample location for both clients and for uh, the those that live within the dwelling. Uh, and you can also see on this site plan that there is a proposed addition to the garage that would be used to accommodate the workshop use. Next slide, please. Uh, so floor plan was provided for the application to show the location. Uh, the addition will be located more towards the interior of the property and does not appear to move any closer to the existing property lines uh, than what the existing structures are. Um, staff have reviewed the application and acknowledged that there are provincial policies that do support agriculturally related uses, uh, such as what is proposed by the applicants. So the, use, the use specifically relates to an agricultural crop that's being grown on the property and it adds vitality and economic viability to the primary activity of the agricultural use. Uh, so some of the criteria we look at within that provincial policy uh, is whether it's farm re farm related commercial use and being directly related to the principal farming uh, use on that farm or one that's close in the area, uh, that it's compatible with any neighboring uh, surrounding agricultural operations and that it's benefiting that operation or one that's close by. Uh, so the application presented currently does meet the criteria for being a permitted agricultural related use in the rural area. Uh, so thank you, and I'm available for any questions. Thank you very much, Crystal. Um, uh, are either uh, Jessica or Jay Chris with us? We're uh, both here, yes. Yeah, uh, anything to add to your application? Nothing to add, Crystal covered it, thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, any questions from council? Are we joined by anyone that would like to uh, comment on this application? Uh, 
application. Thank you very much. Uh, we're now at zoning amendment application C37-2022 C for Alan Deering and Robert Deering, Gummo Road Geographic Township of Percy. And I will turn it over to the staff. Thank you. Through you, Mr. Mayor, as noted, it's zoning amendment application C37-2022. The applicants are Alan Deering and Robert Deering. The property is located on Gummo Road in the geographic township of Percy. The purpose of the zoning application is to rezone a specified location on the subject property from the rural zoning and environmental protection zone to a special rural residential zone and as well as the environmental protection zone. The EP zone will recognize the required restrictive zoning as identified from Lower Trent Conservation Authority. Um, we did circulate to Neil Allenson, the manager of Roads and Ur Urban Services, as well as Lower Trent Conservation Authority. And we also did receive the Lower Trent Conservation Source Water Protection Clearance. Lower Trent Conservation did request a deferral of the application due to the absence of a hydrologic evaluation. Um, staff have further talked to the applicant and discussed the 120 meter buffer that is required in the absence of the HE. I'm just gonna actually bring up the mapping here. Um, there will be a very small building envelope that is at the front corner of the property, which we've, we identified as approximately 0.37 acres. Um, there is a further restriction on the property um, it's divided into two. The whole southern portion um, is actually a hydro easement due to the towers. And in conversations with Hydro One that no development can take, take place on that portion of the property due to the size of the towers. So the applicant is still directed us to proceed um, knowing there's approximately 0.37 acres of a potential building envelope. So what staff will require before bringing this back to council, we've asked for a, um, a surveyor sketch just to clearly illustrate how a house well, septic and driveway could be situated on the 0.37 acres while meeting all the setbacks in, in accordance with the zoning bylaw, as well as any other setbacks to the neighbor's well and setback, just to ensure that everything can fit properly before we bring anything back to council with a recommendation. Um, and I believe that's it. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Thank you, Liz. Um, are either of the Deerings with us? Uh, yes, Robert Deering's here. Thank you. Oh, yes, Robert. Anything to add? Uh, no, that was well covered. Thank you. Thanks for that. <laughs> um, any questions from council? Uh, Councilor English. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, Liz, do we know how many feet from the hydro easement the uh, a building could be, or a residential place could be built here? Actually, yes, through you, Mr. Mayor, when I was talking to the representative from Hydro One, um, the hydro easement itself has 77 feet of frontage and goes for the whole length of the property. And he did confirm that the actual easement, so the full 77 feet, covers any setbacks to those towers. So it leaves approximately 102, 102 feet of frontage on the other portion, um, but within that actual easement, which is identified on an RD plan that no development can take place. Thank you. Any other questions from council? Are we joined by anyone that would like to speak to this application? Um, Amanda and Raymond Munier here. We're the neighbors that are beside the Deerings. We're just uh, wondering if they have any idea of um, the building timeline, if all this gets approved. Our house is rented at the moment beside them, and we just need to know, like we'd like to know for our, for just for our purposes. Yeah, so um, we're actually not planning to build on it. We want to have it rezoned, and the goal at some point would be to sell the property. Uh, so I don't really, I can't speak to when it, we'd be looking at building on it. I mean, we, we won't be looking at building on it. It'll be more a question of selling the property, and then somebody else would build on it. Okay. Okay, thank you. Yeah. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, any other questions? Um, thank you. We'll carry on. We're now at severance consent application B49-2022, B50-2022, 
and B51-2022, along with Zoning Amendment Application C36-2022 for Northumberland Summer Resorts, uh, Lena Cove and Van Tucky, Myers Island Road, Geographic Township of Seymour. And we'll turn it over to the staff. Thank you, through you, Mr. Mayor. As noted, it's severance consent applications B49, B50, and B51 2022, along with zoning amendment application C36 2022. The applicant is Northumberland Summer Resorts, which um, is also Lena Coive, and their agent is Van Tucky. The property is located on Myers Island Road in the geographic township of Seymour. The severance applications propose to create three new parcels. B49 is proposing approximately 0.47 hectares or 1.16 hectares. <laughs> B50 is proposing approximately 0.63 hectares or 1.55 acres. And B51 is proposing approximately 0.53 hectares or 1.3 acres. All the parcels are vacant land and the proposed use is for residential building purposes. The retained portion is approximately 26.84 hectares and is also vacant land. As noted, the applicants did submit the zoning amendment application in conjunction with the severance applications. And it's to recognize the creation of the three new parcels through the severance process. The current zoning of the subject lands is environmentally sensitive and environmental protection. The proposed zoning, all the environmental protection would stay in place and the other zone would be a special exception to the shoreline residential. And there's also a holding that has been, been put in place um, which will deal with the road and it would stay in place until such time as those lots fronted onto a year round municipally maintained road. The zoning for the retained portion will remain environmentally sensitive as well as environmental protection. We did circulate to Neil Allenson, the manager of roads and urban services. Um, he did note again about the road that it would be need to be um, engineered and meet all of the Trent Hill standards and requirements. And it would need an approved turnaround and it will also require Lower Trent Conservation Authority approval. When we circulate to Lower Trent Conservation, at this time, they have recommended a deferral um, based on the wetland features, uh, the floodplain of the Trent River, and looking for some further information. In the addendum to the agenda that was issued yesterday, we had also received comments from Ontario Power Generation um, their concerns are these proposed lots are right across from the Myersburg generating station um, and they also use that road as access. Um, they had also noted if these lots are created and sold, they were looking for a clause to be put in an agreement of purchase and sale, just identifying that the generating station is there about the noise, possibly um, vibrations and the traffic in and out. Although it, it can be put in an agreement of purchase and sale, they had also asked for something like this to be registered on title. As far as planning staff are aware, and we can confirm this again, um, but we don't believe something like that is supported by the registry office to actually be put on title on a deed. Um, so then we just show the mapping of all the proposed lots and where it shows hillside ends this is the portion that the, the lots would be fronting on. Again, it, right now it is not a municipally maintained road and would need to be upgraded to a municipal standard and brought back to council to assume. Um, and then it comes down and provides access to the generating station as well. And then the mapping again, just showing the proposed zoning. And thank you, Mr. Mayor. Thank you. <clears throat> Thanks very much, Liz. Um, uh, are we joined by either uh, uh, Lena or Van Tucky here? Hi. Okay. So, anything to add? Your 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 mic isn't turned on. Is it turned on now? Yes, you're you're fine. Go ahead. Okay. Thank you. Uh, there's nothing to add at this time, but. Thank you very much. Are there any questions from Council? Rick, Councillor English? 
Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, the question I had to planning, the, the, I was down there, the OPG easement, is that right where the gates are? Uh, yes, it is. And uh, the easement area is actually used by OPG, Parks Canada, and um, uh, the, the, the Hydro One as well. So they use it fairly frequently, yes. But it would, um, we're not proposing to do anything to their easement there. That would continue. Okay, so where would the new road go? Uh, the new road would actually follow the current easement that they have now uh, off Myers Island Road and then take a turn towards the dike, which is the river. And uh, then um, that would be the end of what we would construct. So we would actually construct on top of the existing easement that's used right now. So in other words, they would have a better quality road. Okay, thank you. Okay, any other questions from Council? Deputy yes. Mayor Metcalf. Thank you, Your Worship. <clears throat> um so, so just a clarification from planning staff we are looking at three additional and the retained lot which is an extension from what we would usually do as two and a retained lot is that correct i can't comment on that yeah i'm uh, asking planning i don't staff. know what is common i'm asking oh, planning staff. i'll comment on that mr mayor uh, through you to council uh, just to go back to Councillor English's question, I'll also note that it's a municipal road allowance as well. So maybe that will clarify what's going on with the road. And uh, yes, we see these applications as sort of infill on the edge of an existing subdivision that was previously approved. This may be the last opportunity to create any more lots on Myers Island, given the environmental constraints that are in place. Um, they did a fairly substantial environmental impact study to see just how much land was available and it's really limited to this area. And these lots are um, following the pattern of what was created in the subdivision. Okay, thanks. I have one more question if you would. Yeah. Um, the retained portion says it is 26.84 hectares, but if we look at the map, uh it notes it is part four sorry i just have to exit my full screen um the retained portion uh is in the yellow uh the yellow bullet piece and uh, and it points to part four which says it is 0.54 hectares does that extend further than what part four is is that why we have it at 26.84 Yes, through you, Mr. Mayor. Um, so part four shows the buildable portion of that lot. It actually wraps, the retained portion would contain the buffer along the river behind the other three lots and extend down to the south to incorporate a large area that can't be developed because it's, um, I think it's significant woodland. So that's, yeah, so it, yeah, there's much more to that retained portion than just what's shown as the building envelope. Okay, and the envelope on the map here shows 0.26. So that, that will be the only residential building on that 26.84 hectares. Correct. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Uh, Rick? Yeah, Jim, just getting back to the road again, do you see this in the future being problematic with, uh, okay, you said it was a road allowance. Do you think that there should be a private road beside it to enable the easement to stay in place and uh, appease OPG as well? No, I don't think so. I think as uh, the, the proponent said, what this will do is the short stretch at the beginning of what's being used now will simply become uh, the standard of a municipal road. So it will be a much better road for them. And then after they go through where our snow plows will turn around, then it will go back just the way it is now, a well-used easement for them to access their, um, you know, the shoreline, the generating station and any of the hydro lines. So, I, you know, we'll continue to coordinate with them, but I don't foresee that it will create any um, 
conflicts with access. Okay, I'll, thank conf you. I'll confirm that with the roads manager as well. Yeah, I, I think that's that's the kind of the sticking point right now. I think. Okay. Uh, Deputy Mayor Metcalf. Thank you, Your Worship. Just uh, to go back, it was mentioned that that we're looking at this as an extension to a previous subdivision um, development. I'm just wondering if we can get the information on, well, I, mean, I guess I could look back on uh, that subdivision uh, approval development. Uh, I'd just like yes. to see further on to, into that. Are you, Mr. Mayor, we can provide the history of uh, that subdivision. Uh, many of the phases were previously approved by um, the province when they had um, subdivision approval authority. The last phase uh, came over to Trent Hills when uh, that approval authority was passed down from the province. And then we've, I think two years ago, did six infill lots on a block within the subdivision. And this is, is uh, again, following a similar pattern. So we'll provide a bit of history on what's transpired uh, throughout the years on this subdivision. Thank you. Thank you. Any other questions? Mr. Mayor. Yes, Jean. Unfortunately, I've been late getting on and I still can't get my video to show me, but I just have a quick question. On the size of the three lots, we're hearing all the time about people's concerns about the septic systems, but more lately about the amount of water that's available. And I just wondered if, if these, when there's 60 some acres retained, could the lots not be enlarged so that the wells will be farther apart from each other to uh, provide the water in the future without somebody being out of water. Uh, through you, Mr. Mayor, um, I'd note again, uh, in case the councillor missed these comments, that most of the rest of the retained land is environmentally protected and cannot be um, developed and can't be included in the developable envelope. Um, what we'll do also when we review the history of this uh, plan of subdivision is bring forward some of the studies that were done in the past, the geotechnical studies to support uh, wells and septics and the size of lots that were created. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank, thanks, Gene. Uh, anything else? Okay, then uh, we will carry on. Um, we are now at zoning amendment application C33-2022 for the municipality of Trent Hills. The amendment applies to the entire municipality of Trent Hills. Oh. Did I miss one? I think if you can go back one, please, Mr. Mayor. Oh, sorry, I, I did. I turned the page too quickly, sorry. Severance consent application B12-2022, B13-2022, and B14-2022, along with zoning amendment application C10-2022, for uh, 269 Ontario Inc., Alwyn De Silva and Christopher McCarroll, McCarran, uh, Portage Street, uh, Geographic Township of Seymour, and I'll turn it back to the planning staff. Thank you, through you, Mr. Mayor. As noted, it's severance applications B12, B13, and B14 2022, as well as zoning amendment application C10 2022. The applicant is 2693298 Ontario Inc., which is also Alwyn De Silva and Christopher McCarran. Um, just noticing here, it says Myers Island Road on the PowerPoint. That should say Portage Street um, within the geographic township of Seymour. The severance applications propose to create three new parcels, uh, approximately 3,156.55 square meters, which equals 0.78 acres. Um, each one is vacant land and would be for residential building purposes. The retained portion is approximately 4.23 acres of vacant land and would also be eligible for residential building permit. Currently, municipal water and municipal sewer are not available at the subject location. 
Therefore, private services, um, being a private drilled well and private waste disposal or a septic system would be required if residential development occurs prior to the extension of municipal water or municipal sewer. A hydrogeological and servicing assessment was completed by the applicants for the proposed lots. Um, the proposed lots do not meet the minimum lot frontage for the residential one zone if they are serviced by a private well and private septic in accordance with the Trent Hill zoning bylaw. Therefore, the applicants have also submitted a zoning bylaw amendment application, which is C10-2022, um, which would acknowledge the re reduced lot frontage in the residential one zone. Um, so again, they have submitted the zoning amendment application. The current zoning of the subject lands is residential one and environmental protection. The proposed zoning for the severed and retained portions would be a residential one exception in which the exception to that residential one zoning would acknowledge the reduced lot frontage within that zone. Again, a service by a private well and private septic. All the environmental protection zoning would remain in place. Thing. We did circulate to Neil Allenson, the manager of Roads and Urban Services. He did comment about the requirement for ditching as well as a swale, and he has requested a drainage plan. Lower Trent Conservation Authority was also circulated. At this time, they have requested a deferral and have requested further information, including an environmental impact study due to the potential of fish habitat. And we also received some public comments from Jeff Stapley, Lane and Gail Lewis, Bill and Donna Labrash, and Sharon Garneau. Their comments were all included in the agenda package for your review and consideration. Um, then we look at the mapping for the severances. There were some questions about the back portion by the pond being landlocked. In fact, it wouldn't be landlocked. It, it is attached to the retained portion, which does have frontage on portage. Um, but due to the pond and the subsequent buffer around the pond, the applicants have been made aware that a driveway cannot actually be put through this portion. Um, so it's not landlocked in the sense it's attached, but there could be no driveway or anything put through the buffer um, a walking path or to get back to the property. And it shows the proposed location of the three other parcels through the severance process. And then we have the same mapping, but it shows the proposed zoning for each. And thank you, Mr. Mayor. Thanks very much, Liz. Um, are the proponents with us this evening? Um, yes, Mr. Mayor. Yes, yeah, anything to add? Karen. Good evening. Good evening. Anything to add to the application? Well, we were asked to do a few of the tests which we uh, completed, the last one being the water test, I believe. Um, I'm not aware of the uh, results uh, of that test. Uh, all I can say is that it's only the three lots in the front on Portard Street that are being uh, considered for uh, development. Uh, a note uh, which I was reading from some of the neighbors was regarding the uh, wildlife and um, the clearing of the lot. What we did do is we made sure that everything was done legally through a professional uh, a, a tree service. Only the trees that were rotten or which were already uh, on the you know on the ground were cleared and buried. The rest it was shrubs and uh, you know uh, that's that's what was cleared. Everything else was uh, maintained. In fact, the person we bought it from had even asked us to if we wanted. In fact, she was. She was the one supervising it, uh, the work, uh, because we, we live about an hour and a half away. And she would give us an update on everything that was done and everything was done according to her in the proper manner. The only thing that was suggested from one of the earlier uh, neighbors uh, was th that we should clear and go closer to the pond, which is clearing of the cattails to which we refused, saying that that could be illegal and we wouldn't want to do anything that, uh, you know, goes against the bylaws. And we said, once we get there, then we could take a look at what needs to be done. So I'm uh, a little surprised at these objections that have come, except for the water, which I understand. The rest is that we were asked actually to sell it back to the owner who we bought it from. And I guess uh, when we refused, uh, we found all these uh, objections coming through. A couple of uh, other neighbors as well asked us to sell it to them. And we said, uh, 
we were thinking of developing it ourselves. So I'm just wondering uh, of this resistance. But anyway, um, we want to do everything legally. So whatever has to be done, we will uh, we will uh, comply with. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Thank you very much. Uh, do we have anyone joining us that would like to speak to this application? Hello? Yes, go ahead. Yeah. Go ahead, Jeff. Hello. Yeah. Hi, uh, Jeff Stapley here. Um, family uh, owns the property to the north of the development. Uh, I put in uh, one of the letters in uh, to whoever it was to concern from my family. Um, this property actually runs down two sides of our property, and uh, I've. I've only, I believe I've only maybe spoken to one of the people that own it once. I've never, I've never been contacted about anything. Um, in my letter, there's quite a few uh, questions to the town. Um, I, I did post uh, quite a bit of stuff about uh, lower trend and I asked about that. I see they've deferred till another meeting. They need some more time. That's, that's fine. Um, just, just, I've never done one of these before, so bear with me. Um, everything I've watched tonight when we talk about sizes of properties and following bylaws it seems to me that everything that uh, this proposal is asked for is already a no um, I'm just curious how how much we talk about that when the slot size are way too small and uh, and we're, we're curious up on the hill as of all the neighbors uh, there's any neighbor that's on Portage Street is interested maybe they all didn't reach out with with uh, um, letters, we're just curious as to the town as uh, what Portage Street. Uh, what, what do you classify when you start to to develop? What do you classify as subdivision or? Uh, uh, just because there's been some comments to uh, talking about other subdivisions and extensions and how when things get approved they just go and there's uh, subdivisions actually on east and west side of Portage. I believe on Oak Street, there's a big subdivision up there that uh, was done a while ago. And then to the south, uh, the old Mackenzie Farm is, uh, is a fairly big subdivision that's gonna go up Windsor Avenue, which, uh, which uh, actually is gonna touch our property on the other side. So, uh, so we're curious to uh, the urban area, and that's in my notes also on, on what the town proposes up there. Um, in my letter, the... Uh, with uh, with with all of the questions on on the actual proposal for the lots, the actual in my letter, there's quite a few uh, questions about the actual street and how to get up the hill. It is a dead end street. Um, um, I'm just wondering if if anyone will reach out to us, our family privately. We are the we are the end house. We we do own it as a dead end, and uh, that's not been talked about. Um, Um, back to the uh, the property being environmentally protected. I've also heard tonight and learned about this environmental sensitivity. I don't I don't know the difference between them, um, but uh, there is a large. It's a man-made pond that's down there, but it is probably one of the largest ones around this area. And uh, and with the proposal, when we talk about the three lots out on the front of the property all being 0.78 of an acre, um, which is already under undersized for, for everything at sewer and that. Um, we're, we've, we talked about anyone up there that has wells, we're all concerned about water, concerned about runoff. But uh, the other extension, the last little sliver that would, would extend to the back, the back property is, would that be classified as property or, uh, so I, I see there was an answer in there that there, there, there is no way to get to the back property. Is am I understanding that correctly? Uh, there's a walkway, Jeff, as my understanding is you would be able to have a walking path that would connect the okay. lot back through to that piece of property. Okay. So the little sliver, the little sliver lot wouldn't be big enough to actually propose a fourth house there down the road then. 
if, if we agree with 0.7. Mr. Mayor, perhaps I could uh, chime in and try and answer some of these questions. That'd be great. Uh, through you and uh, to, uh, to Jeff and Council. Um, so just to note, uh, the zoning on the lands is residential one. And then um, as noted, we have the pond, which is in the environmental protection zone. Environmental protection means no development. And there's also a 30 meter buffer around that pond. Um, the applicants um, went through all this with the Conservation Authority, I believe in 2018, even before COVID when they could still meet with staff. Um, the residential one zone permits a um, lot size of 1,400 square meters, which is just over 15,000 square feet. So even when you consider the buffer around the pond, there's still 20 to 25,000 square feet of land available on these lots for development. So it does meet the requirement for the zoning bylaw in terms of development area size. Um, the only the only thing that does not comply with the zoning that's being applied for is the frontage because they're applying to create three new lots with one retained. Um, instead of the frontage being 30 meters or 100 feet, it's 70, 78, I believe, something in that nature. Um, it's in, it was in the notice and I believe in the summary that's in the um, slideshow. Um, so, so it does meet the zoning requirements. The only thing that's different is we're looking to create four in total as opposed to three in total. The fourth lot, the retained lands, there is enough area on the front of that lot um, to allow for development, but obviously we've talked about not being able to get um, a driveway or access that might allow for development on that back portion at this time. As the mayor said, it could be accessible just over land um, by walking or wheel conveyance, something like that, uh, you know, perhaps a uh, driving lawnmower with a trailer, something like that to get back there to do maintenance. Um, try to, I'm trying to remember all your questions, Jeff, to make sure I've covered them all. Um, we can certainly talk to the roads manager about Portage Street, but he did comment on um, how access to the lots would be uh, implemented and the need for a drainage plan to make sure in, in no water is running out from any development on, on the lots onto Portage Street. Um, I'll leave it there, but certainly can answer more questions. Thanks, Jim. Okay. Uh, just Sorry, I did remember one so, other thing. You did talk about yep. the urban boundaries. So um, I'll note that this area is right where the town of Campbellford formerly transitioned to Seymour Township. And um, in 2000, when the uh, official plan was, uh, was created for the new municipality of Trent Hills, the urban boundary was extended out to the end of Portage Street. Okay. Um, I, I've lost the screen. Um, are you there, Jeff? Uh, yep. Go ahead. I just 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 curious uh, if there's there's no concerns from anyone about putting three lots in 0.78 of an acre and putting in three new wells and three new septics next to. I'm pretty sure you'll if you read some of the notes from some of the other neighbors up there, they already have water issues. Um, we do have, I believe, there's town water that's coming up the hill. Um, but I don't, I think, I don't think it stops. It would stop at what I always was grown up to know as the town limit, which is at the top of the hill. So, so would that be something that the town would look into is extending water services and that for anyone? I mean, it is a considerable distance uh, through you, Mr. Mayor, to extend the water. Um, the, the um, it was noted that a uh, hydrogeologic um, study, not a full study, but uh, an inquiry into the wells and the availability of water uh, was done in response to the previous uh, circulation and the comments from neighboring property owners. So uh, at this point, we think that that issue has been addressed. Thank you. Any other questions? Uh, Rick? 
Hi. Just, just okay. Just uh, one moment. Uh, uh, one of the counselors will speak, and then I'll get to you. Okay, Rick. Okay. Uh, thanks, Mr. Mayor. Just a couple of comments. I, I just wondered why the municipality, the minimum lot frontage. I think Jim, you said before, is a hundred feet. And why are we going to seventy-eight feet now? Uh, that's the choice of the applicants to propose to create three new lots and one retained with those frontages. We have had extensive conversations, but they've chosen to propose this. I never got all that. I got interrupted, but okay. I, I just don't know why we're, if, if our policy is 100 feet, why we would allow 78, that's all. Right. As the mayor would say, that's is why we're having this public hearing to hear these comments. Okay. Okay, and uh, I, um, we have uh, Lindy Garno. Uh, your your microphone is turned off, so if you turn that on, go ahead. Okay. Hi. So I'm I'm just operating this so my mom can speak. So yes. Go ahead. Hi. I really agree with everything Jeff has said. Uh, the big a big concern is the septic and the water because everyone up here has sufficient water but we don't have an overflow we're all very careful so three more homes with wells and i can tell you back in the late 80s when a house was built up here <clears throat> excuse me and a well was put in our front well went dry. So it, it's happened to me once. So I'm I'm very concerned about that. Mm -hmm. Um I think that Yeah, we'll do that. Was there anything else you wanted to say? No, that's good in the yeah. well, thank, thank you very much. Um thank you. Thanks. Okay, so uh, I will say that um, all of your comments um, uh, will be taken into consideration and there are no decisions being made tonight. So the, uh, you know, uh, Rick, do you have a question? Yeah, and the deputy mayor has been trying to get in there too. Oh, but anyway, sorry. just the other comment that, I, that I'd like to make to this is the lower trend has they're looking at a deferral of it and uh, about an impact study being required. And the property also is within the intake protection zone for Calmaford drinking water system as well. That was noted by Lower Trent as well. So uh, I think all these considerations need to be uh, considered in this. Uh, and, 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 that's, and that's what'll happen. I mean, you know, as we said, there's no decision being made um, but I'll, I'll now go to, I, I, I'm sorry if I missed you, Mike, uh, Deputy Mayor Metcalf, you had a comment? Yes, thank you, Your Worship. Um, back to the minimum lot size. Uh, Jim, you mentioned that 1,400 square meters was the uh, lot size within policy for development and that these meet that. <clears throat> the... Is there a minimum lot size for that the well and septic? Because each of them, and I know we talked about this, but I'm wondering if there's a a setback um, that obviously we're going to have to look at if we go ahead, uh, if this goes ahead. Through you, Mr. Mayor, that's a great question. I should have said the 1,400 square meters or 15,000 square feet is for a lot with private services for so with a well and se septic. Um, and yes, there are setback requirements. Um, for a drilled well 50 feet to a septic system and for a dug well 100 feet to a septic system. So whenever um, a building permit comes forward and there's consideration for wells and septics on either side um, that are existing, the, the plan has to show that that's been taken into consideration. Okay, thank you. Um, it was said earlier by the applicant that, that, that we they're asking to split into four four lots, uh, but the one lot they had no intention of using. I'm not sure why we're looking at splitting this into four lots and not 
uh, keeping it at the uh, two and the retained lot like we would usually. Um, I guess that's just sort of a comment to me if if we're not uh, the applicants not planning on using it as a, a developing lot then. Um, just a comment uh, about that, that that certainly is a discussion we've had with the applicants. Um, the I would note that recent changes to the Planning Act do allow them to change their application through the process before it finally comes to council. So maybe something they consider further. Okay, thank you. Jeff, can I, uh, can I speak, Kenneth? Okay, go ahead. Me again? Yep. Yes, yeah. Uh, yeah, thanks. I, I just want to. Uh, to, to the chair there, to Mike, thanks for that comment, because uh, that's actually been one of our concerns is actually setting a precedence um, for the back lot. If, uh, if, we dis if this goes forward and this becomes the norm of cutting down our already small, our sizes of our lots, then that creates a, a, another problem. And, and for our family, this, this property is two sides of our, our property also. So um, even though the even though the lot can't be gained today, it might be able to be gained to later on. And, and we were concerned about setting the precedence on the other f remaining four four point two some acres. Thank you. Uh, anything else? Well, thanks everyone for this uh, great discussion. And as I say, um, staff will come back with a recommendation. We are now at Zoning Amendment Application C33-2022 for the Municipality of Trent Hills amendments applies to the entire Municipality of Trent Hills. Staff. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, so through you, we're bringing forward uh, application C33-2022. Uh, and as noted, this amendment applies to the entire jurisdiction of Trent Hills, uh, as the amendment is looking at implementation of the affordable housing strategy uh, for the municipality of Trent Hills. Next slide, please. So the amendment addresses existing policies that are in the bylaw uh, and looking to reduce barriers for affordable housing and housing in general. Uh, the amendment also looks to include new policies related to additional residential units, uh, which have been supported by the provincial government uh, with previous Planning Act amendments uh, for specific regulations um, and also with the most recent changes for uh, the bill that was released last week, I believe. Uh, next slide, please. Uh, so uh, the Trent Hills affordable housing strategy was received by council in November, 2019. Uh, the strategy resulted in an action plan that addresses housing gaps for the municipality and it created 30 recommendations for implementation. Uh, so 10 of those recommendations are specific to the comprehensive zoning bylaw uh, for update. Um, and this amendment before you speaks to uh, four of the next slide, please. So the actual proposed bylaw was attached with the agenda. Uh, so you do have the specific proposed uh, provisions that we're looking at, but I wanted to just highlight an overview for the four that we're looking at. Uh, so recommendation 11 speaks to uh, outdated terminology in the bylaw that relates to shared housing. Uh, the amendment looks to update references for legislation that no longer exist and would replace with the specific act that is in effect. Uh, then we have recommendation 15. Uh, and what this is looking at is existing provisions that and ensuring that provisions are not creating barriers for more diverse housing supply. Uh, so this amendment reviews permissions for development of undersized lots and it removes rezoning requirements for existing lots of record in many instances. Uh, the amendment also looks at ensuring height and minimum yard setbacks for smaller units uh, so that we're not being uh, prohibitive. And the setbacks are linked to those of accessory structures, which are typically smaller. Uh, so the recommendation 16 speaks to alternative parking for a variety of different housing options. Uh, this amendment specifically looks at uh, parking related to additional residential units, and it speaks to tandem parking as a viable uh, parking solution, and would recognize that in our bylaw. Uh, and then we have recommendation 17, which expands upon our existing secondary dwelling unit policies, uh, which currently allow two units on one property 
uh, and would recognize additional residential units, which would allow three units as of right on the majority of residential zones, uh, provided the listing listed provisions that are in the drafted bylaw are met. Uh, so some of these that we've added, they were already present in the secondary dwelling unit uh, bylaw. So things such as you not putting any uh, units in the floodplain um, or on private roads. Uh, however, we have expanded on those provisions to recognize that more units may be in detached structures and rural areas. Mm. And uh, the provisions also speak to adequate servicing and setback. Mm. Um, so these amendments are the beginning of implementation of the guiding policy and regulation amendments for the municipality uh, with respect to the affordable housing strategy. And staff will continue to bring forward additional amendments that will address the housing gaps within the municipality. Uh, so thank you, I'm, I'm available for any questions. Um, council, any questions? Uh, Councillor Redden. Yeah, thank you. Um, not so much a question as a comment that if any member of council has not already read this, uh, the uh, study that they need to, um, primarily because not only what's in there tonight, which I think is, is fairly significant in what it's proposing, but also um, the other things that are going to come forward. Um, it is going to have uh, an impact um, on some of the development that may be coming forward in the, uh, to council in the next uh, while in order to provide additional units of a smaller size for individuals in this community that are, are particularly in the, in the urban centers that, that really need uh, additional housing and hopefully it'll spur it along, but it's, it's very readable um, and it's an excellent um, um, report on what's what's in this area. And um, I'd encourage, if you haven't already seen it, you need to get your hands on it. Thank you. Uh, and I missed a hand. Someone did. Someone else have a hand up? Deputy Metcalf. Where? Yeah. Okay. Uh, uh, first, uh, Deputy Metcalf, and then I'll call you, Gene. Good. Thank, thank you, Worship. Um, one of the good points that I, that comes out of this is is being able to reduce um, some of those sizing, but as noted in the amendments, uh, we're still following uh, those necessities of building building code, uh, making sure that we have space for, uh, and it's very timely water and septic, uh, and those types of services that need to come to, to come to these uh, lots. So although we may be looking at um, you know gently densifying how we develop uh, within the municipality, we still need to be able to make meet those needs. Uh, of those specific codes as well, so uh, I mean that's something that that people need to need to realize is um, we're not just you know randomly making it easier for for uh, developers. Uh, this is this is about release re relieving uh, a, a housing issue. So hopefully these will uh, these will go forward and and still meet those safety and requirements that we always look at. Go ahead, Gene. Mr. Mayor, uh, as you all know, we just went through an election and the common thread of what I was hearing different times was we never knew. We never knew about the new ward system. We never knew this. We never knew that. Somehow we got to do a better job of informing people. We can't rely that everybody's going to be glued to computer and got spare time to pick through each and every bylaw. I think before we go forward with reviewing this, we need to have a public meeting, and I mean a public in-person meeting where people can address it and, and planning can tell the people what's on the floor and we can get a, a an instant uh, support or not support of what we're doing. Sometimes there's just way too much polite language used and you don't get down to the bare facts to, to really find out what some of this legislation is going to do to us. I guess that's what my concern is that we, I don't know why we don't have a public meeting like we used to have in Hastings Civic Center and open the floor and get here to hear what populace wants to hear, not what they want to hear, but what they want to say. That's my blurb for tonight. Thanks, Gene. Well, it, you know, and I, I I concur with what you said. I, I heard that many times over the uh, 
course of the last election where uh, people said they, um, mm. you know, I had people tell me that, uh, you know, they, they hadn't seen us enough. And I, uh, I, I was surprised because I, I know that during COVID, um, you know, we did a weekly um, um, Facebook post that told people what was going on. And but then people told me, well, you know, we don't, we don't go on Facebook. So um, uh, I agree, we have to find some new ways. And I, uh, it's one of the things that I have written down that, um, that, that I, I wish to address in either uh, one form or another of how we can, uh, you know, we can answer people's questions and, and get more information out in front of them. Uh, so that's something that, that I want to do going forward and, um, and we'll see how we can do it. So, uh, Catherine? You. I I would I would just like to to make sure that council understands that this report came in 2019 and it came out of significant consultation uh, with um, all of the municipalities in Northumberland County and in fact I believe and I'm not sure of the date at one point perhaps Jim is aware of it that the um, some of the authors of this report and I, it may very well have been Rebecca Hannum had a delegation and a presentation to council. Um, members of your staff plus myself also reported on some meetings that were held um, uh, regarding these matters. And this is all a compilation of a lot of things that have come forward um, to this council. And I think right now they're actually being um, hurried along because of demands by our our residents um, and our and individuals, not only just in, in Northumberland County, but throughout the whole province and beyond, that we need to be addressing housing right now. And uh, a number of provincial uh, or some provincial legislation is also encouraging this. I agree that we need to hear from our residents. That's what this report came from. And if you read the report and saw the, the amount of time that people at that time were waiting, this is pre-COVID, that people were waiting for homes, for apartments, just to, for for con for whatever housing they needed. Um, it must be far worse than that right now. But it's something we need to get on, get on, and show some leadership in, and at the same time do consultation. But I think the county, I, I'll say the county's done an excellent job in what they've done so far, and I think it's time that council implemented what's here. Thanks, Kathy. Um, uh, Mr. Mayor, if I could uh, make a comment. Yes, go ahead. Um, I, I think uh, Councillor Redden's given an excellent summary of uh, where this uh, um, amendment that's uh, been created by the manager of planning has come from. It's been some time being developed and now we've had an opportunity to at least start to address these things. But I also um, agree with uh, Councillor Bahani. Uh, we do need to communicate well with the citizens um, it's not just a matter of putting the bylaw out there. We need to, uh, uh, a phrase that we use sometimes hear is the plain language from planners. What does this mean to the changes? And uh, we certainly are just getting started on this. We want to bring it forward quickly and not without thorough um, input from the community. So we'll take that to heart and try and find a way to um, make sure people are aware of it. Thanks, Jim. Uh, okay, thank you for that one. Um, we are now moving on to Planning and Building Department 2023 fee schedule, which is municipally initiated. Um, Liz, are you taking this? I'll take this one, Mr. Mayor. Sure. Uh, first so, yes, and I got it wrong. <laughs> That's all right. Uh, so this one should be pretty short and sweet. We just wanted to provide uh, notice. So as Liz had stated at the beginning of the meeting, we had put out notice to the public uh, on the website as well as in the communicator uh, for the general amendments for the municipality. Uh, this was one that went out uh, notifying of an opportunity to speak to and ask questions of staff uh, at this meeting. Um, so it really is just an opportunity to collect feedback from any members of the public that wish to speak uh, as well as council for what uh, the planning and building department are proposing for the 2023 fee schedule. Uh, so that the both schedules were attached to the agenda. So you do have the full attachments, but I just wanted to go over some highlights for both. Uh, next slide, please. So for the planning fee schedule, um, highlights for us is mainly most of our fees are increasing slightly to just account for uh, an increase in the cost of service. Um, and as you all know, uh, 
planning fees are based off of user pay principles. Uh, so essentially we establish our fees so that we can uh, collect for cost recovery. Uh, so those are increasing um, for the majority of them. We also have included uh, more opportunity for planning application deposits with applications. Uh, this allows us to essentially have some money on reserve from applicants to make sure that we have funds to cover all of the work <laughs> that uh, staff are putting in for each of these applications. Uh, sometimes we're doing historical reviews for applications and that does require costs uh, to land registry, uh, things like that. So what this would allow us to do is uh, make sure that it's not coming out of the full tax base for the municipality and it would be directed back to those who are applying uh, for the consideration. Uh, we also have some new fees that are in there uh, that are mainly based off of uh, Planning Act legislation updates. Uh, so we were in uh, either last year or beginning of this year, possibly. Uh, there were some new uh, things we can do. We are able to retained parcels uh, to protect them from uh, contravention of the Planning Act. And we're also able to cancel uh, certificates for Planning Act severances now. Uh, so we have included those uh, processes into our fee schedule for this year. And we've also provided some new fees just based off of what we have noted that we do work for that we currently aren't always recovering costs for. An example of that is when we have plans of subdivision and we're receiving multiple submissions, uh, this new fee schedule structure would allow us to recoup a bit more cost once we're getting past uh, what that first uh, fee would be covering. Uh, next slide, please. And uh, while I don't know tons about the building fees, I have a few highlights here for you. Uh, so they have included in their fee schedule for miscellaneous fees, uh, specifically outlining solar panels and solid fuel burning devices uh, in their fee schedule. And the only fees that really have increased are the septic fees, and that's to stay in line with what Northumberland County uh, charges for their reviews. Uh, so that is everything, and I can answer any questions. Thank you. Any questions from Council? Rick? Yeah, Crystal, any uh, public feedback at all? No, we haven't received anything to date. Okay, thank you. Okay. Uh, Ken? Uh, thank you, Mayor. Yes, I just looked at it and I see that on 17 items, the prices went up and uh, fees that were already were in place. But I also see that there's 23 items where there's fees that were never charged before or also it says not applicable. And our ANA, does that stand for not applicable or does that mean that um, these fees? These are bought in for something that didn't exist before. I was just curious about, because uh, we've actually changed the price. We've got 40 things we're not putting a price on, and a bit concerned that it's making it difficult to, to build in Trent Hills. Sure. So, yes, where we use not applicable, that is typically uh, we were not uh, requiring fees for those services. For most of those, we did do the work, though. So that's what we're looking at is staff are... Uh, actually doing work for it, but we aren't getting any fees in from developers to actually cover the costs of that development. Um, so I would say compared, we did look at our neighboring municipalities. We did jurisdictional reviews uh, and we looked at what is being charged in the Northumberland County municipalities. And generally speaking, we're faring pretty well if people were coming to municipalities for the cheaper development fees, they'd be coming probably our direction. So uh, we're still in line with that. We're, we're increasing them a bit, but we still are on the lower ends of what people are uh, having to submit for their planning applications. Kathy? So just to follow up on what Ken just said, for those um, activities that you were performing, Crystal or staff were performing, that you were not charging for prior to tonight, or at this time, but we're still performing, that it was being compensated for by the general public out of the general tax base, correct? That were not the developers. So we were 
technically subsidizing the developers to do development, right? Yes. Yeah, we were not accepting fees from the developer. We were doing it out of essentially staff time that we could have been focusing on applications that people paid fees for. Okay, thank you. Thank you. <laughs> if uh, there's nothing else, I will call for adjournment. A mover and a seconder, please. Move by Ken. Second by Rick. To call a question, please, Doug. Councillor Tully? Yes. Councillor Bratney? Yes. Councillor English? Yes. Councillor Kelleher McLennan? Yes. Deputy Mayor Metcalf? Yes. Councillor Redden? Yes. Mayor Craig? Yes. Carried by seven, Your Worship. We are adjourned at 721. Uh, if you can give me a moment, I will just conclude our stream.